Hi and welcome to this video. These days about the only social gathering we get up to is games night. It's a good way to catch up as well as having an activity to do. In this video I'll show you the best games to play at games night from easiest to more difficult. The easier games are usually also good to play with people who are not that into board games. And in general for games night I think it's always nice to play a bit of an easier game as well as a bit of a more difficult one. On the right side of the screen I'll show you four characteristics of each game. The first one is whether you play a game individual, cooperative or in teams. So individual meaning you play against the other players, cooperative meaning that all the players play against the game and in teams just two teams against one another. The second is the amount of players you can play the game with and the third is how long it takes to play one game. The fourth and final characteristic is price point. Obviously it will vary a little bit where you buy a game on how much it's going to cost but in general one euro sign will say it's around 10 euro or less, two euro signs will say it's about 25 euro and three euro signs will say it's around 50 or more. Don't buy anything you can't afford, but do know that if you buy a board game, it will last you a lifetime. Let's get started. The first game is Memory. It almost needs no introduction. You try to find pairs as you turn two cards over at a time, and the player who ends up with most pairs wins the game. Look and find. The original game is called Double or Spotted, but we have the Flying Tiger version. In this game, we try to find a matching image on your card with the one on the stack. Oh, a uh, rolling pin. There. If you're the first person to do so, you win that card and the player who ends up with most cards wins. Top trumps. In this game you get a list of stats and you have to call out the highest ones to win the other card. Top trump 60. 39. Uh, humor 30. And basically the person who ends up with all the cards wins the game. Uno is a card game in which the goal is to be the first person to get rid of their cards. You try to match whatever card is on the top of the discard pile, and if you can't, you have to draw from the draw pile. You know. The following games are, I'd say, party games, and both of them you play in teams. In Cranium, there are four different categories through which your team can advance on the board. There are word puzzles, you may have to act or hum to get your song or movie across to your teammates. There is also Pictionary, and there are trivia questions. I find that, especially with the word puzzles in Cranium, I sometimes get stuck, so I think it is nicer to play this game with people who have the same native language as you do, and that's also something that applies to the next game. 30 Seconds is a game that we don't have ourselves, but I've played it at friends' houses. In teams, you get 30 seconds to describe five names to the other person in your team. These are names of cities, artists, movies. You get one point for each correct answer, and that's how you advance over the board. Sequence. You can play this game with two or three players or two or three teams. The goal is that as a team you must complete two connected series of five of the same color. To place a chip on the board you have to discard a card. And it's as easy as that. In Rummy Cup you have to fit your tiles with the sets of tiles on the table. You can connect adjacent numbers of the same color or connect the same number in different colors. The person to get rid of their tiles first wins. In Picomino you roll the dice, but you can only pick one number per roll. You try to get the highest combined number on the dice so that you can get the highest tiles from the table. You can go bust and lose tiles if you only roll numbers you've already rolled before. So it's between playing it safe for lower numbers or going for a gamble. Exploding Kittens. The goal of this game is to make sure every other player explodes except for you. And that's how you win. During your turn you can pass or play one of the cards in your hand. At the end of your turn you have to draw a card and hope it's not an exploding kitten. Codenames Duet. There are different versions of codenames but we have the duet version since most of the time it's just the two of us. However you can play it up to many people so it's definitely suitable for game night. In this game you have to work together to discover all the codenames that are on the table. You have to use one clue to describe one or multiple code names, and you have to make sure to do it in time because you only get nine turns. Forbidden Island. This is another cooperative game. All players have to work together to make sure they capture four treasures and leave the island before it sinks. Ticket to Ride. Over the last year, this has really become one of my favorite games. At the beginning of the game, you receive routes which you have to complete. And you can complete them by collecting colored tickets to buy trains to go in between two cities. 
you get points for finishing routes as well as for the amount of trains that you place in between two cities. And the player with the most points wins. In Carcassonne you make the board as you go along. Per tile you place on the table, you can claim a city, road, monastery or grassland with a meeple. The longer your road or the bigger the city when you finish it, the more points you get for it. Katam. In this game you throw the die to gather resources. Resources enable you to buy settlements and cities or to buy development cards. Each of these give you victory points and you need 10 victory points to win the game. Catan is a bit different every time you play it because you can change the position of the resources as well as the position of the numbers that you need to gather those resources. If you've played the base game a lot and you would like to be challenged a little bit, I would really recommend you to get the expansion. The expansion I recommend is Cities and Knights. In this expansion, the players are not only up against each other, but also up against the barbarians who attack Catan every so often. Next to that, there is another edition of commodity cards and these things all give you new ways of earning victory points. And in the expansion you need 13 victory points to win the game. Finally, Pandemic, I'd say a very appropriate game this year. In this game all players play together to defeat multiple diseases which have emerged across the multiple continents. Each player gets a different trait which either helps them to cure the disease or stop the spread of it. You win if you manage to cure the four diseases before the cards run out or before they spread beyond recovery. And that concludes my games tips for Games Night. I hope this video was useful to you and do let me know if you have any other recommendations down in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe so you're updated whenever I upload a new video. I hope to see you soon. Bye!